Hi everybody, this is Dr. Dan from BME 214L. One of our main goals in BME 214L is helping you guys learn how to build instrumentation circuits. And so I know that's a new thing and there's a lot of challenge, and so I made this practice quiz for y'all to just learn how to translate from a circuit diagram into building the physical circuit. So I'm gonna uh, go through some videos. You guys should definitely try this on your own first, and then if you need help or you need confirmation that you're doing it right, you can watch the videos to help out. So we're going to start off with a simple flashlight circuit. It uses an LED to light up. It's powered by a battery. Uh, it has a push button switch because we want to be able to turn it on and off. And then it also has a resistor to limit the current to the LED. So we're going to build this in Tinkercad first. And so the first thing we need to do is just basically drag all of our components over. We're going to build this on a breadboard. So I'm just going to use this small breadboard. And so remember, the thing you have to remember about a breadboard is where the connections are. Right, so on these horizontal rows, it, where it all turns green, it means all those pins are connected together underneath the breadboard. On the vertical rows, it means those five are all connected together on the breadboard. Okay, so when we look at this circuit, we look for the connections we need to make. One of the main things you need to get used to is just like where are the nodes in this circuit and where do those connections need to be, right? So our first thing I'm gonna put on here is an LED, right? We have an LED right here. I can just plug it anywhere in my, uh, my breadboard. I'll just plug it there. Uh, you can see it has both a cathode and an anode. And so in a normal circuit, the anode goes to the positive side of the battery for this diode. And so that's what we have here is this is the anode signal and it goes to the positive battery. Okay, and so when we're thinking about nodes, there is a node here, right? There are two things connected. There's a battery, positive side of the battery, and there's the anode of the LED. Okay, so let's go ahead and stick in a battery. Uh, we can use any different types of batteries to power this. Um, I'll go ahead and use the coin cell battery uh, just because that's what we would end up using in class if we're going to do this. I'm going to rotate it around so we can actually fit it on here. Okay, so we wanna connect this positive terminal to the anode, and so that's as easy as just dragging those, and now those are connected together. So we can see the negative goes to a switch, and the cathode of the LED goes to a resistor. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw in a resistor in here. Okay, and we can set the resistance. I'm gonna set it a little lower. I'll set it to just 500 ohms. Okay, and so that is these two are connected to together, and now we have the cathode of the LED connected to the resistor, just like we have wired here. These two are connected together. Okay, and then, so that's three of the components. The last thing is this push button switch, which we need, and I'll stick it in here. So one of the tricks with the push button switch is figuring out exactly what the terminals mean, right? So it's terminal 1A, terminal 1B, terminal 2A, terminal 2B, like, which of those are connected, which are not connected. We can always find that out. So I'm gonna use the multimeter to find this out. And you could, this is what you would, I, I would honestly do in real life. I get a multimeter to check and make sure I know what's going on. So I'm gonna just plug the negative of that terminal into, so we're, we're, we're plugging across terminal 1A and 1B in here. And we wanna measure the, the resistance. We wanna see if there's uh, it should be with the button open, a lot of resistance. When the button's closed, it should be no resistance. So I'm gonna start the simulation. And we say it's no resistance. I press the button, it's still no resistance. Okay, and so what's going on here is these two terminals are actually already connected um, to the same thing. It's just giving us two places we can hook up a switch. Sometimes switches are like that. So I'm gonna rewire this to this terminal, right? Terminal 1A and terminal 2A and run the sim. Okay, so the switch is open and it's basically, it's showing a lot of mega ohms, which means a lot of resistance, which means there's a lot of resistance there. When I press the button, it goes down to zero ohm, which is no resistance, which means, okay, these are the two terminals I need to worry about, right? And I could probably do the same thing on terminal, on the top terminals too, they are, they are connected together. But just to make sure, right? A lot of resistance when it's open, when we push the button, no resistance. Okay, so now that we know how this works, we can actually uh, go ahead and put this in. 
however we want. I'm going to stick it so that our terminal 1B is hooked up to the resistor, right? And so that means the other side needs to be hooked up to the negative side of the battery, right? So we need this side to be hooked up to the negative side of the battery. So I can just stick a wire, you know, somewhere on this same uh, column as the negative. Okay, and I think our circuit should now work and light the LED when we press the button. So let's try. LED's off now. I go ahead and press the button and it's on. Okay, so that is how you translate this circuit into a real physical thing on a breadboard.